When designing circuits with transistors, there are three basic circuit configurations that can be used. There's the common emitter, probably the most common one. There's the common collector or emitter follower style and also common base. So in this video, what I'm going to do is to unlock the secrets of these different configurations. I'll give the circuits, the basic circuit configurations and look at their advantages so that you can choose the best circuit configuration for your design. So let's not hang about let's get on with it. As I've already mentioned there are three basic configurations that can be used common emitter, common collector and common base. So let's take a look at them in turn. It's also worth remembering that the equivalent configurations are also applicable to FETs and to valves or, or tubes, call them what you want. The first and possibly the most common is the common emitter circuit. This is used in many amplifier circuits as it gives a good level of gain and overall performance. It gets its name because the emitter electrode of the transistor is common to both the input and output circuits. The signal is applied between the base and emitter and the output is taken from the circuit containing both the collector and the emitter. This circuit configuration, like the others, can be used with both NPN and PNP types of transistor as we see here. A typical circuit using a common emitter might look like this or this more comprehensive amplifier circuit. As a basic summary of its characteristics, the common emitter circuit gives a medium level of voltage gain and also a medium level of current gain, providing a high overall power gain level. The output is inverted compared to the input, in other words it's 180 degrees out of phase, and the input resistance or impedance is medium, as is the output resistance or, or impedance. Next is the common collector and this is often called an emitter follower and it's widely used as a buffer amplifier because of its characteristics. Again, this configuration, the common collector configuration, gains its name because the output and input both utilise the collector as the common electrode. The input is applied between the base and collector and the output is taken between the emitter and collector. It also gains the name emitter follower because the output follows the input voltage variations even though the emitter is 0.6 volts below the base. Typical circuits may look like this simpler one where the base is connected directly to the previous stage or this one where there's a capacitor for DC blocking requiring a bias point to be set for the transistor. The common collector or emitter follower has a, a unity voltage gain. It has a high current gain and as a result it has a medium power gain. The output is in the same phase as the input and the input resistance is high whereas the output resistance is low making it an ideal configuration for use as a buffer amplifier. The third and final configuration is the common base. This is not used as much as the other two but it can be very useful in a number of applications, in a number of circuits where its characteristics really pay dividends. As the name common base intimates, this configuration has the base connection common to the input and output circuits. As this is often grounded, it may also sometimes be referred to as a grounded base configuration. A typical circuit may look like this and it's often used where a low input impedance is needed such as in some audio applications where possibly a low impedance microphone might be used or it's often used in RF circuitry where the low input impedance makes matching to the standard 50 ohm impedance that's often used very easy. Another advantage of the common base configuration is that the base electrode is between the emitter and collector within the transistor itself and as the base is grounded it can help with RF stability, isolating the input from the output. The common base circuit configuration offers a medium voltage gain, a low current gain and a low power gain. The input and output are in phase and it offers a low input resistance or impedance as I've already mentioned and it has a medium output resistance. Each one of these configurations has its own characteristics and these enable each one to be used in different circumstances so that the best circuit operation can be gained. If you need any more information head over to the description area and also please don't forget to watch more of our videos, to like this video and also to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.